A year ago this week, a female doctor in Nigeria died from Ebola. A man had come in from Liberia with the disease, but very few people in Nigeria knew about it then. He went to a hospital with some of the symptoms, and this female doctor was one of those he came in contact with. She recognized the symptoms of Ebola and had him wait while she ran tests. He would have left and gone to God knows where, spreading the disease. With this singular act of preventing the man from leaving the hospital when he wanted to, she saved countless lives in Nigeria. She prevented what could have been an Ebola epidemic in the country. Any of my loved ones could have come in contact with that man if he had left the hospital. He eventually passed away, and so did she. I'm dedicating this episode to Dr. Ameyo Adadevo. May her soul rest in peace. Welcome to The Gist. I'm your host, Toyosi Phillips. The Gist. guys welcome to the show you know it's going to be an interesting one i'm having one of the baddest djs on the east coast join me later yes he's even been nicknamed the east coast bully just because of how popular he is in this part i'm talking about dj zemo he's going to be on the show later to talk about his africa entertainment award nomination the upcoming nigerian entertainment awards and the whole dj thing should be should be fun let's talk about Nicki minaj and her wax figure at madame tussaud let me update those that don't know Madame Tussaud in Vegas created a wax figure in honor of Nicki Minaj. It's actually a compliment to have your wax figure as Madame Tussaud, as in it means your career has blown, like it's going great or it was once great. Yeah. So they created one for Nicki Shan. This is what it looks like. Nicki Minaj with no cloth, okay, very little cloth on all fours. Of course, people have been taking rubbish pictures with it. This figure is begging for people to take rubbish pictures with it. In fact, if you go there and you don't feel the least bit inclined to take a rubbish picture with this wax figure, you are truly born again. Yes. Now, when this figure was revealed, another singer, Azalea Banks, was one of the first to condemn it. She said, why would Madame Tussauds do something like that and give Nikki a wax figure of her on her knees, that it looks degrading and that very soon people will start taking weird pictures with it. Well, she was right. People have started taking weird pictures with it. And now other people are angry, saying Madame Tussauds should have known better. Please excuse me. When Nicki Minaj was trying to gain more popularity, did she not go half naked in her videos? Did she not crawl on the floor like somebody with serpentine spirit? Did she not release a picture that the eye should not behold multiple times when she wanted to promote Anaconda? Why then are some people taking it personal? Even talking about racism. Someone even asked that, why didn't they do the same thing to Beyonce? I mean, I have the answer for that question. They didn't do that to Beyonce because they knew Beyonce for her voice first before they knew her for her body. We knew Nikki for her body first before we knew her for her music. So people should stop drinking Tylenol for her headache. In fact, she does not have a headache because she's not complaining. At the unveiling, she called this thing iconic. And guess what? According to a press statement released by Madame Tussaud, they said Nikki's representatives were informed about the process every step of the way. If they had a problem with it, they would have said something. So. Honestly, I don't think Nikki has a problem with it. And I won't be surprised if she's even happy with all this drama that is going on now. It's still part of publicity. If she comes out to say she's not happy, it's because people have disturbed her life. Just know that one. It's because you've disturbed her life. This is the image she has portrayed to us. When someone says Nikki Minaj, it's not turtleneck and long sleeve that comes to mind. We know what comes to mind. I'm just saying. Anyway, those people have said they will beef up security around the wax figure, Sha, so people cannot take weird pictures anymore. We'll see how that goes. Let's talk about Empire. Still one of the top shows on TV, but Power fans swear that Empire is child's play compared to Power. Me, I don't know. I don't watch Power, and I don't know if I can start watching. Please, I have a lot to do. But you guys make me want to watch it so bad. Every week, there's something about Power, 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 Power. Especially the last episode. So I don't know what happened, but and let me stay focused. Te focused yes so empire is coming back for a new season next month yay i can't wait but that's never why i brought it up see <laughs> one of the empire cast got slightly embarrassed this week in memphis hakim lion aka yaz real name brescher gray i think that's how it is he shot the rapper in empire the one that sang drip drop eh? drip 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 drop hey eh? yes that one okay so he went to a club in memphis and then now so that the line outside was long he decided to skip the line by going through the exit door now celebs usually do this they go through the exit or the service entrance to avoid the crowd at the door but for some reason they didn't let him in I think it's because he went maybe too confidently or he was cocky and someone was actually like he should have had one of his guys go like one of the goons go to 
the security guard to talk to them first. He shouldn't have gone there on his own. Anyway, in the video that I saw, people were actually laughing at him when he couldn't get in. Poor boy, he's just 21 and that must have been so embarrassing for him. But it will motivate him to work harder. You know when people embarrass your life and insult you over certain things, you just say, I will make it in this life. Yes, that's what you should do. Moving on to David Oyelo, he made history this week. The first black to play the role of James Bond. Aye, James Bond. But he's not going to be in the movie. Is the audio version that he's going to be doing. So I guess how it works is there is an audio version for every James Bond novel that comes out. And a new one was commissioned recently by the Ian Fleming estate called Trigger Mortis. And he is going to be the voice. He's British of Nigerian descent. I don't want to say he's Nigerian because he doesn't quite identify as Nigerian. He was born in Oxford. So it's not like he was born in Nigeria and then moved out. No. But please, I've noticed that in media publications, if someone is doing good, they'll say he's British. If the person does bad, they'll say he's British of so, so, so so descent not cool let's agree if we're adding descent to our description or removing it completely not that someone rob a bank you now say he's a uh, british of burkina faso descent that's nonsense sorry burkina faso people i'm just that's the first thing that came to my mind i'm not insulting people sorry please let's move on from this story two faces turning 14 next month hey to baba no lele come to the center and party you and start to be feeling like a monkey you ah that song was sick jam right there and then but okay yes he's turning 40 and he made the announcement on twitter this week and introduced the hashtag 45 he said he's going to be celebrating with different events a flag off party a book presentation star tribute concert and more all this will start taking place around september 19 should be interesting but what is even more interesting than the anticipation of the event is his hello magazine cover with annie his beautiful wife they look so cute on this cover and there's a quote from him on the cover that says I feel like I got lucky because I married someone I love. Oh, so touch it. Still on singers and the Nigerian music industry, hmm, the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, released a list of songs that are not to be broadcast in Nigeria anymore. Some of them include my Shakiti Bobo. Can you imagine? Shakiti Bobo Baolamide, then Yaya and Don Jazzy's Gift, Lil Kesh Besereo, Shinode Taya, Hey, Davido's Fans, Me, and others. The reason given for the ban of many of these songs were vulgar lyrics and obscene videos. Another reason was promoting drug trafficking. Now, when this happened early this year, I was on the fence about NBC and their list, and now I'm still sort of like on the fence but what NBC needs to realize is that people can listen to these songs on spotify and watch the videos on youtube so that's beyond their power what is it wait so i think they can actually prevent the songs from playing on youtube you know how you go on youtube and it says this song is not allowed to be played in this country ish yes that's actually possible i don't know i don't know shall but it's different from having it actually play on the radio you know when you're driving home in traffic and maybe your malicha is on air with her sweet voice telling you she'll play some nice songs for you wouldn't it be nice if you can actually hear your favorite song at that moment but it's not going to be happening unfortunately see i personally think any singer that truly cares about his or her fans having easy access to her music or his music will tone down the vulgarity of the lyrics and videos i mean if you want your fans to be able to call a radio or tv station and request for your song you'll tone it down for their sake it's okay to be a bad guy yes but in my opinion really pushing drugs in your music video doesn't really raise your street cred just saying Congratulations to Trevor Noah, South African comedian taking over from John Stewart for The Daily Show on Comedy Central. Awesome. His promo for the show dropped this week and it's so cute. I can't play the whole video for you guys, please, because we'll get flagged. And I don't want that. But this is a clip from the video. So cute. And before we go on a break, I want to say congratulations to 19-year-old Miss Musumola Oladipo, a student at the School of Nursing in Luth. She won the Miss Virginity 2015 pageant that held last weekend. In her interview after winning, she said she has been able to hold her, in her words, golden egg. Despite the pressure she's gotten from guys because of her conviction. Congratulations, Miss Virginity. I hope she's seen as a role model to other young girls out there. Okay, we're going on a break now. When we get back, I'll be joined by DJ Zemo. You're watching The Gist. Welcome back, guys. 
thank you for staying tuned. So with me right now is one of the baddest DJs in New York. And believe me when I say he's not just a New York DJ, he's an international DJ. I went for my cousin's wedding in May and guess who I saw there as DJ? DJ Zimo was there live and direct, just dropping some Yankee tunes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, Zimo, you're international. Yes. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Definitely. So I was going through your bio and I saw that, like a lot of people, you had yeah. a typical 9 to 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then something just you know, slid to your just, brain. I just got up, I just got pissed off at work and I just said, you know what, I think I'm done with this. And I just got up and walked out. No one believed that I was leaving. And even to this day, I meet some of my coworkers. They said, that's like an epic story to them. I just got up, I just left. And ever since then, I just never went back to wow. my life. But what happened? Like, what happened? Did you have a fight in the office? No, no, it was just, I just looked around mm. and I just saw everyone else. I said, this cannot be me 10, 15 years from now. This is not my dream. This is not what I inspire to be. That so, is so cool. And that yeah. is really, really inspiring. So I tell everyone out there, if you have a talent, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying leave your nine to five, but, you know, one life to live, pursue your talent. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Thank yeah. you. So you set up 745 Entertainment. Yeah. What do you guys do? I have Afropolitan Sundays in Philadelphia, Blue yeah. Martini. Uh, Zemo Smooth. This is my new thing right now, Zemo Smooth. Nice. Uh, one of can my you, brothers. Can you bring one for me? Uh, you know, I'll give you this one. What? Because I just came, I actually did an event in Abuja about three weeks ago. <laughs> that, yeah, that was the main launch of uh, Zemo Smooth. Nice. Smooth DJ Smooth is one of my brothers that I've always worked with. And every event we did, we had over a thousand people there. Nice. So then he moved to Nigeria. And then every event we did in Nigeria, always crazy. And then we just said, you know what? We always work well together. Everything is always, you know, in sync. Instead of me doing my thing and you doing your thing, let's just combine the energy and just grow. You know, so yeah. and and you don't really see that a DJ duo in the everybody's individual. Yeah, but, you trying know, to grow say, their you know, own. Yeah, okay. so just put the energy together. So now we have uh, tour dates probably coming up. We we're looking to do Dubai and a few other places, nice. do Europe, and then uh, we're going to do a nice little tour around in America that's, as well. So that's that. And I also have DJ Zemo weddings. Yeah. That was what took me that's to... That's what started it, actually. Yeah, yeah. That was what took me to Nigeria when okay, you saw me. Yeah. So DJ Zemo weddings, I do about 40 to 50 weddings a year. And I travel to the Caribbean, Europe, Nigeria, all over the place, all over the states doing weddings. Let's let's talk about the NEA Awards. NEA yeah. has grown in leaps and bounds. It's crazy yeah. how it has become really recognized now. And yes. people have this question, like, why are you celebrating Nigerians not in like in America. Why are you doing a celebration for Nigerians in America? Why are you not doing it in Nigeria? Okay, well, NEA oh, came sorry. about. First of all, I'm asking you this because you're one of the founders yeah, of yes. NEA. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, one of the founders of NEA. Actually, NEA came about because I've been DJing here, doing a lot of things here for a long time. And a lot of my friends are artists here, promoters, doing their thing, really, really promoting the African image and African culture mm -hmm. and music and entertainment in America mm -hmm. for the longest. But every time I go to Nigeria, we don't get any recognition. So I said, you know what? If we don't recognize ourselves in, the, in, in what we do here, who's going to recognize us? Mm -hmm. So that's how we started NEA. And a lot of uh, the artists that we started with have grown and now are international artists. First year, we had Banky, we had Sauce Kid, and we had a, flu a lot of other artists. And mm -hmm. now they've all... They're so huge. Look at that. They're all huge now. Huge. Banky is head of our records and everything. But <laughs> yeah. without the NEA platform, what do they have? But now NEA has grown so much that if you actually look at it, most of the Nigerian artists that actually come from Nigeria here, their first encounter with the American market is through NEA. And now because of NEA, you have Freema, you have AEA, -A -E -A -A, and others, yeah. are, which is a good thing because yeah. that shows that the industry is growing. So pretty much the reason why it's here is because uh, we want to celebrate our Nigerian artists here, mm -hmm. and we also want to encourage and celebrate Nigerian-American Nigerian. artists that are here as well. I actually like that here you go for parties and they yeah. play Nigerian songs and Definitely. you have even foreign DJs. There was a time I went to some place um, in the East Village and they were mm. like playing Nigerian music. Yes. So I looked, I thought it was like a Nigerian DJ. No, it was a, I don't know yeah. where he was from, but he was not Nigerian. He was not even black. It's funny you said that because when I started DJing, Nigerian music was nowhere. Mm. 
And then I used to have to travel to Nigeria to meet up with the artists, get the music, come back here, do a mixtape. Everybody downloads the mixtape, know all the songs. Then when I played at parties, they people started it. getting into it, getting into it, and getting into it. So now everything is growing and other cultures, even for example, Afropolitan Sundays in mm -hmm. Philadelphia, we did not have an African night there till about three, four years ago. And now because of Afropolitan Sundays, all the bartenders are all American, all love African, African music. music. All yeah. the clients that come in there, people actually come in there just to hear African, African music. music. So, and other DJs and everybody else, even for example, I have my show tonight, Zigzag Show. Yeah. And all the DJs there are mostly from the Caribbean and they all love African music. So now they all have a nice little African playlist. Mm. So, and that's how, the Afrobeats movement is going it's to grow, growing. you know. It's so, actually growing. but that doesn't mean you guys should start hiring them over us. <laughs> we are still the Godfathers original. Are original, so you still have to come home and we play American, Korean, everything. Yeah, yeah so, we love uh, you. Don't worry, nobody's yeah, going know? anywhere. You know, so, yeah. yeah, you talked about the African Entertainment Awards. They actually nominated you this year. Yeah, definitely, for definitely. Best DJ of the year. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's always good to be recognized for what you do, mm. you know. So, because for years I've been the one giving out awards. Mm. So when someone recognizes you, it's a great it's feel. Great. It's, it's a great, great feeling. You know, I also support every other DJ that got nominated yeah. for the NEA and for the AEA. Yeah. So, there's something I talked about earlier. I had my opinion and I want to know your opinion on it. Yeah. This is the wax figure of Nicki Minaj in Madame Tussaud. Okay. And people are upset. Why are they upset? That why didn't they show her like standing, holding a microphone or in a more, I don't know, appropriate position? I had my opinion on it. What is your opinion? No, I want to hear yours first. I want to hear yours first. Do you think that's <laughs> appropriate for Nicki Minaj? Do you see anything wrong with that? I can't, I don't really have an opinion on it because, <laughs> I mean, if, if that's what you're selling, it's kind of like Amber Rose. Mm. If that's what you're selling, and that's what you're putting out there. At the end of the day, some people will go ahead and portray you that way. So that's just what it is. Thank you. And so. that was my opinion exactly. Like, yeah. why are people getting angry? This is how she portrays herself. If they that's put the Michelle image. Obama in that image, then would have a problem with that. That's a different, yeah. Then would have a problem with that. Exactly. So yeah. take, take, chop, no, yeah, chop, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about any other projects you're working on. Um, right now, NEA is uh, September. Okay, let me just break down the NEA weekend for you yeah. real quick. And I would love for Sahara reporters to be part of it as well. Okay, we'll it. see. You so have to come. If your price Hopefully. is right, you can show up, you really can dope. talk to really? people. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So pretty much the NEA weekend, uh, the main show is September 6th. Okay. You know, that's, uh, and then uh, we have a few events before then. We have the meet and greet, that's on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then also the band is doing a show that day. The oh. band in uh, Metal Montano. Where? Uh, it's in New York. It's in Manhattan somewhere. Nice. So that's going on. We're supporting that movement. And then we have our welcome party at 803 Lounge. Okay. First huge 803 big... 803 Lounge is in yeah, Jersey. Yeah. I first huge big Nigerian built from the top club. So it's a beautiful thing. So we have to support our own. Nice. So that's on Saturday. And Sunday, we have the award show. Okay. And the after party is at Liberty Theater. It's one of the biggest, baddest clubs here. Nice. So we're doing a major. And then on Monday, we have the best day party ever. Mm. So that's really? going to be at the rooftop in Manhattan, Hudson Terrace. Okay. So I'm not, I don't know if you're much of a party person. Um, but I saw you in Nigeria. You were acting a little conservative. I don't know why. Really? I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, you Are know, you serious? Yeah, a little conservative. So maybe, you know. Okay. I'll have you in my section and we'll turn up. Oh, shit. Turn it the way up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Zemo. Definitely. How can definitely. people reach you? Like social media? Just plug Okay, let me go ahead and put that out there. Instagram, DJ underscore Z I M O. Mm -hmm. For anybody getting married out there, DJ Zemo Weddings. At DJ Zemo Weddings. And I have Zemo Smooth. That's a new movement with mm -hmm. DJ Smooth. And also. You can always reach me at my e email, djzmygmail.com. Awesome, yeah, awesome. So, Thank yeah. you so much for being here. It's a pleasure here. being here, and I can't wait. I'm watching you grow. I'm keeping tabs on oh, you as well. Oh, you know? that's, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Know. you. DJ Zemo, everyone, will be back after the break. Definitely. Thank, Thank you, Toyosi Phillips. Really appreciate it. And we've come to the
the end of the show, guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Zemo, for stopping by. I wish you all the best in everything. Please, guys, like this video and share with someone and follow us on all our social media platforms to get all the gist that won't fit into the show. And I forgot to tell you guys, Perez Hilton actually liked one of my Instagram posts last week. Hey, I was just floating like a butterfly for the rest of that day. Yes. So please follow us on social media. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. In the meantime, remember, you can be everything you want to be. Mm.